we are, we are going to start the session soon. Please take a seat. Uh, this is a long day, right? A little bit tired, sleepy a little bit. How many coffee did you have today? More than three cups. Oh, is it only me? Oh, everyone has so much power. Okay, so um, today we are talking. Um, so now in this session, we're going to talk about Metaverse and Web3 Gaming. I am Omji from Incode Club. Uh, Incode Club is uh, offering boot camps to onboard Web2 developers to Web3. Also, we are operating hackathons and accelerators. So if you're interested in uh, a lot of hackathons or all different activity activities in online or in person, uh, you can find us on Twitter easily, Incode Club, or my name. Uh, also, if you have some any questions regarding that, we can talk about it later on. So, the enormous potential of blockchain uh, make us kind of exploring in all different sectors. So, like a finance uh, as a forefront of this, a forefront example. But these days, all these like Web three trends are getting uh, expanded to all different concepts and all different sectors. Today, uh, in this session, we're going to talk about Metaverse and Web3 Gaming. Perhaps a lot of you heard about it recently. Um, so let's discuss uh, what is the Metaverse. So before going into talking about what is Metaverse, let's talk about what is not Metaverse. Uh, how many of you have you watched this movie, Ready Player One? This is a great movie. I like it. Uh, but one thing I wanted to talk about this was when people don't think about Metaverse, uh, often this movie become a great example, which I cannot deny that it pictured like a kind of one part of Metaverse. But Metaverse is not a, just a digital realm of the digital world or like virtual reality only. It's far beyond that. So let's say this is helping us to imagining something what could be, but it's not actually a Metaverse we are talking about. It's a kind of part of it. So, um, how to start with the metaverse name? Like, it's meta coming from beyond and verse coming from universe. It's kind of beyond the universe. Still, like, it sounds like what it means. So, it's about, like, a beyond our actual uh, real life, and we are extending it beyond it, but still we have a connection to it. That's the kind of biggest difference between the game we already played before, and now some of them we start to call it metaverse. What is the difference? We're going to talk about it. So the metaverse, I would say this is an alternate version of reality. So I, it doesn't mean that like it has exactly like reality looking like avatars or the buildings. It's more like a, they're mirroring our interactions in reality, maybe economies or like certain interactions. That is the reason why we are calling as a certain universe inside instead of uh, a game itself. So what kind of use cases do we have? Like many things come up, coming up to your mind perhaps. Let's go through different, uh, different concepts. So one is like a non-competitive interaction. Of course, one of the famous example is a game, and game can be a competitive, but not only game, there is like certain social platforms that you can perhaps like a hang out with the people wearing different wearables, you meet each other, or like you doing an interview in the platform. So the platform is not necessary for competing each other, but certain interactions you are having, interaction, the kind of interaction can be vary from the nature of platform or how community is building. So uh, non-competitive interaction, one of the examples I found very interesting was like recently I saw there's a platform who said that the online interview in metaverse platform with a certain like a mapping. And you would think that like, a, I mean, we have a Zoom or a video chat, what is the difference? Actually, the interaction they wanted to mirror into that metaverse was, when you go to the interview room, you're kind of waiting in front of the room, and then you see that someone go inside, go out, you kind of prepare mentally, right? You go into the group room. So just providing this 2D map that people can actually move along together, they could say that the front, of, front person went inside. I just came out now. Okay, it's taking long. It's not like I have a signal problem. It's a very simple thing. It's nothing near to our real world, but it brings the real world interaction into it. So that's the kind of universe we are seeing through the metaverse. And it's not necessarily virtual reality. You need to wear the older goggles. It's more like what kind of things we are bringing into, the, uh, into this digital world. 
Another, uh, uh, yeah, this is actually the, uh, I already explained that this like virtual world is a mirror into real world, not about just our physical property, but certain interactions. So it's not like about being, we can be maybe orc or animal or like something unimaginable inside, but it's more we are looking into what kind of interaction we are doing in this real world and if we can do that inside. And this brings a virtual economy, which is quite interesting part. Like virtual economy, we are selling things, like we are making things, and then you are trying to like uh, trading with the people. But when you think about our game before, this kind of thing really exists with the MMORPG. You know, like you were kind of warriors going to hunt the squirrels, I don't know, collect the leathers to become a knight one day. This kind of thing existed before. What is the difference? They are connected to our real world. So it's not about just game. But like a, either you are taking the certain virtual assets, which could be a uh, wearables, or even you can create assets, and then you can transfer to someone, or you can sell, and this creates certain economies, which is giving an impact to our life. And in this, um, in this joint, you start to say that, oh, okay, this is a metaverse, not like a traditional game anymore. And of course, like blockchain offer this like technology framework to make it possible, especially and this like a making an asset, making it on chain or a trade, and then also like a you bridge to different chain. So blockchain itself with the metaverse or Web3 gaming, uh, it, it's playing a role as a um, infrastructure. And of course, like a easier example, we can think of a metaverse born to be a game, so that in this like Web3 gaming and metaverse has a very like close connection these days, and a lot of people are interested in. Perhaps a lot of you maybe tried already certain games here, so we're gonna talk about it a little bit together as well. So we talked about what is the uh, metaverse, what is like Web3 gaming, what is the difference between the uh, original game we have, and then also like a Web3 uh, games are offering certain different things, so what they are uh, what they are offering, and also like what kind of things like make us distinguish from them to traditional one and Web3 one. So traditional game, maybe uh, one thing we need to th uh, talk about here is like a why, what is the matter, why we need to talk about game. It's like game is a just game, why is it important? Because it makes money. Even before uh, Web3 Gaming with a play to earn concept, game actually matters that it's a huge industry. Uh, there, is a, um, uh, there is a report that like by 2025, just the gaming industry would become such big as like 268 billion. And this is not like Web3 game I'm talking about, this is just gaming industry overall. So a lot of people are playing games and they're spending time there, they're spending money there. And now we are wondering they're like why they're doing it and if they're gonna do exactly the same thing in Web3. And they're earning out of it and do they have the same experience? Uh, I guess some of you were here in the panel discussion before with Jay and John and Anthony. Uh, they were discussing also a lot about these uh, new games, like if you're focusing on a playing part or earning part, and there's a lot of questions still around, and we are exploring the concept. But here today, we're gonna talk about the general concept of the Web3 games, and then uh, we're gonna have some questions so that we, we're, gonna bring, we're gonna have some homeworks in the end of this session, every one of us can think of, and if you're uh, interested in topic, you can contact me so that we can have a discussion. So, uh, traditionally again, we had a problem of the no true ownership for in-game asset. What it means is, if you want to kind of play uh, with a, uh, I don't know, super nice sword, then you usually put your fiat money in, and then you buy the game asset and you are playing with it. And this one, you think that it's owned by you, but actually if this game shut down, you cannot use this asset anymore outside of the ecosystem, nor actually you have it in your account. I mean, legal perspective, perhaps it's still yours that maybe game company just cannot erase it easily, but let's say this asset is not in your exactly. It means that almost it's same as um, you have a kind of license of interacting with your asset, so you have access to your asset but maybe the asset is not really yours. It's kind of having an impact that you don't truly own those assets. And then another thing is the no control over in-game information. So if you're playing game, while playing game, you're providing a lot of different information there. And those informations, um, 
at the panel discussion, there was already like a discussed that these gaming companies, some companies perhaps doesn't have the incentives to go to Web3 because they already have their own modes by controlling all this information and data, and then they are making the business model out of it. And this is a thing, so in a player side of view, we, we are thinking that, oh, okay, my data and my information, I don't have any control over it. And that comes this uh, Web3 gaming. Of course, like Web3 gaming has the nature of this decentralization because the, we are using blockchain as a framework. So what we can do, so first, like we have integration of blockchain, in most cases, game itself are not really on-chain. There's some game on-chain as well, but most times, uh, the assets we are having or certain part of the game gonna be on-chain, but actually we are playing uh, outside of the off-chain. So like uh, what we can do, Typical example, let's say um, very early um, stage uh, Web3 gaming is CryptoKitty. Maybe you were like a collecting certain cats, you are breeding them, you are looking for another cars, then then those assets were on chain that you could trade that NFT. Or like a recently the famous one like Axie Infinity, so you buy some Axies, or like a, you buy some heroes from DeFi Kingdom, and you do certain interactions, Depending on the game, of course, certain interaction is on-chain. Maybe you are trading something or like you are staking something. But also, uh, if you're in the other types of game, like MMORPG and you go to hunting and so on, uh, it's possible that most of game interaction is happening outside. But at certain points, it can store certain data of your asset and that you can perhaps bring even over to other ecosystem. So, so what? Uh, bring, uh, so what advantage we have from this? Because of this nature, it provides us transparency and availability. So that um, instead of a certain uh, central authority have the, all the data and also deciding the next steps of the game, uh, with this way you can actually see how this game is processing or this game strategy going on, and then you can even participate in through the governance token. Not every game has a, like the a same structure of the tokenomics or like the same strategy. So we cannot say that like everything is exactly the same, but in general, you have a much more availability and the transparency over the game. Also again, so that like you can control your own ownership, your asset and your data. And this is the one of the most important um, factor we started to build the like Web3 gaming around. Now there's like a lot of kind of different um, how to say, it could be noise or like a great effect is like a play to earn so that you start to have some financial advantage and so on, which could be um, good and bad in this case. We can discuss uh, later on about as well, but the initially the concept about this, this decentralization is coming from the ownership control and then you can contribute to the game and then you can have a, your own stake on it. Another interesting, oh, there is a typo. So another interesting thing about it is like because it's bring the uh, virtual economy, also it bring the fair uh, virtual market. So if you have a certain asset, maybe some of you have experienced that when you're playing Web2 game, you had a great character, great account, or great item, and you are selling it perhaps through a certain entity because it's not really allowed in certain countries or certain games. So then maybe you agree that, I don't know, I will send you through the eBay, I don't know, $10 and you sell me the sword. And then maybe you send it and they don't send you the sword anymore and then maybe you got a carrot. But what I wanted to say is like, so that they already had this like a market prepared and also like a border list. So if you have a certain in-game assets, then you can uh, trade it easily uh, with uh, like this, like a market gonna be deciding the price so you have a true economy inside. Now, um, maybe a lot of you are curious about the play to earn. Uh, I, I, I think like a lot of you came to this session actually talk about play to earn. Uh, how many of you never heard about play to earn? Oh, actually we have someone didn't heard about it. So when we talk about it uh, very shortly, uh, play to earn is, so when you're playing the game, normally uh, you're playing because I don't know, you like it, you want to go to the next stage and so on. And in blockchain, um, initially game wanted to incentivize the player who are playing and contributing to the ecosystem. So they were giving a reward, which could be a different kinds of in-game assets. And because people want to have those assets, this asset has a value and there is a market and you could actually earn money, which could turn into the fiat currency. And 
in certain countries, you could uh, make a living out of it. So uh, I would say in the beginning, this concept was not about like a play game and you make money. It was rather started as a, like, a, you know, the whole blockchain philosophy that you contribute to the ecosystem. You wanted to give a reward. And in this game case, it, the reward was like a certain types of asset. It could be maybe certain wearables, certain weapons, or certain characters, or certain tokens. And then, uh, because this had a value in the market, you could transfer it to fiat currency, and then you were earning, and all these concepts start to be called as a play to earn. And this play to earn games, um, we would, I would like to introduce certain uh, games of Avalanche. Um, uh, have you ever played the games on Avalanche? Anybody? Oh. Uh, we have just one person, just by curiosity. Which game have you played? Okay, that's the first game I wanted to introduce, Krabada. So Krabada is a, a nice, cute game that the crab, not cute, crabs are fierce in fighting each other, so that you need to win. Uh, so I actually wanted to show the graphic of it, so I prepared, da, 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 here. You can see that. So this is how Krabada look like. They look super cute, but they're actually fighting each other. And then you can see that they are using the, uh, this your token economic model. If you are not sure like what it means, it's all fine. You can see that you have uh, these like a crabbies, and then you can breed them to make a new one, and then you can make them battle to each other. And then this actually gives you a two different types of token. And if you go to the token economics, you can see that this is the NFT asset. This is like my crabby, you know? And then you're gonna have a two different types of token. One token you can use for the governance so that you can like vote into the like a next step of the game, while the other one is in-game currency. So you can use this for, for example, most of games in-game currency is being used to breathing your NFTs, like you buy something. So this is used as a certain like a burning mechanism of a certain in-game currency you receive it as a rewards. And there's like this kind of your tokenomics model is quite um, popular. And then these are there like a, some like a three different co uh, like token economics also coming along, which I would say this is not most important thing now. Just they are there. You can still exploring about it. Um, then uh, once when it comes to the game, like uh, perhaps we need to think about um, pretty different important factors, and we're gonna discuss about it later after introducing some more games here. So another one I found from, oh, where is my mouse? Okay. I found from Avalanche Ecosystem really cute was a snail trail. So it's a first racing game in Avalanche and you're racing with the snails. I actually never played yet, so I don't know how much they're fast, but it looks quite funny, right? So here you get the rewards, uh, which is like slime token. And this is a, a, one of the typical earn, uh, play to earn game that you are playing. You are getting the reward. And those rewards, if it has a market value, it could be turned into the fiat currency. And another game looks really cool is a uh, Telcraft. It's a, a card game. So it's kind of the board game style. You can see that it has a like medieval concept. And then you are uh, collecting those cards. You buy certain elements. It's kind of you become an alchemist. And then you are making a new um, kind of creating something. And then uh, for, do, by doing so, you are getting a rewards. And then, of course, like you can trade those, I assume. And then another thing is uh, Atlantis word. This look like some kind of old uh, MMORPG style, right? So this is climbing as a, a social platform with a certain gamification. So this is like another uh, example that recently uh, quite popular comes set in different chains that you have this dot image, like kind of nostalgic design of the game. And it's either a social platform or you can play certain game, which is another very famous one as a DeFi kingdom. So DeFi kingdom is very famous uh, DeFi uh, games on Harmony. Recently, they made a, their, their own um, uh, chain using Avalanche uh, subnet. So you could see that in Avascan, if you go to the old chains, you will see that like a DFK chain is like DeFi Kingdom chain. Here, you can buy certain heroes and you can do certain activities like a farming or like fishing, which is actually um, um, almost like, a, how to say, um, equal to the certain DeFi activities you would do. So you are actually staking the coin or like you are bridging something and by doing so you are getting a rewards. 
So now uh, let's go back to the uh, slide and jump the name. So, like how to earn all these games? Uh, we just talked about that. There's like certain uh, a certain financial benefit you actually could have. How to earn? First, like in-game currency. So if you're doing certain activities in the game, it's quite similar to like a traditional game. Like you're running and you are kind of collecting the coins. So such as you are fishing or staking, we are fighting, and you will be collecting a certain in-game currency. And most of games, a uh, common method these days is this in-game currency going to be used as a utility token. So perhaps when you're breathing your NFTs to get new generation heroes or characters, you're going to use this in-game currency to um, do those activities. And then another one is um, in-game NFTs. So for example, when you are breathing, perhaps you're going to have a certain like a rare NFT coming up. Or another interesting concept these days is a kind of mystery box. So when you're staking uh, certain like a tokens or certain NFTs you have, they're providing like mystery box. It's something similar to lottery. So all of you, uh, depending on how much you stake, you may have a different probability. And this is going to be opened. And then you're going to have a certain assets. Or before opening, you can sell. So there's a lot of different fun gamification going around. Uh, I really strongly recommend you to uh, try some stuff. Not to spend too much money on it, just like easily, you know, try some games, try to make some transactions to get the feeling. And I want to know that if you really enjoy it, or if you feel like you're going to play two months, three months because it's so fun, or you want to play because you're going to have a financial benefit, that's the cash mark. Uh, we can talk about it um, with this like play to earn game. And the next way how to earn is a staking. So we mentioned before that like in DeFi Kingdom also you could stake. So you could stake either your NFT or your, uh, your like a tokens you earned and it's gonna give us some yields. So a certain like Avalanche game we just talked about, I remember that one of them actually, they're giving like Avalanche, Avax as the yield. And then there's like certain games giving a different types of the staking rewards. It could be certain mystery box, not necessarily a token, like a fungible token, but then it can be certain fungible tokens you can collect and use it as an in-game currency, or you could change to fiat currency. So all the interesting part is because it's connected to the real world economy. So what is the difference with the phone games we are having, you know, like you have maybe Clash of Clan, and then you are collecting certain tokens to, I don't know, use the barrack to make more warriors. And that one, nobody called Metaverse. Well, why this one we called it Metaverse? Because this actually interacts with our real economy, that those in-game assets, you have a market, and it can bring it into our economy quite easily. Even though our traditional games still they were not completely disconnected. So I would say this concept was still in our head, right? We were playing game. Some of people were asking if you go to certain Reddit forum, maybe, hey, I'm selling my, I don't know, high level characters. So this kind of um, desire existed before, but this blockchain infrastructure make it uh, much easier for the user transferring their assets. And then because it influenced to our real economy fairly easily, we kind of have a feeling that there is another universe beyond the screen. Now, what kind of things we can do earn? So we are talking about play to earn. Perhaps recently a lot of you heard about uh, move to earn. Step and become very, very popular that you could like walk and if you're walking a lot, you could collect. There is like a learn to earn that if you're finishing certain lectures, they're giving an in-game currency. So there's a kind of gamification factors. There is like a slip to earn that uh, there is another like, kind of fun, um, fun concept, I thought. So a lot of Web3 people are not sleeping, right? So they actually had like a, um, one small project made a slip to earn. So when you stake, so you are locking your token and you need to sleep enough amount of hours. If you don't, you don't get the rewards. And the, all the yields going to the people who sleep enough. Um, I don't know if this is like a highly economic so that you earn a lot of money, but sleep to earn sounds funny. And now the cash mark is, if you're focusing on to earn part, like at a certain point, can you call it as a game or it actually become a work to earn, right? So now we are sitting here, maybe we are studying something and because we are enjoying it, interacting with the others, we are talking, can you imagine if it become talk to earn? Instead of you're maybe enjoying and talking to your friend, maybe you just focus on talking as much as possible because you're gonna earn. Sleep, similar. So the problem is, in the beginning, when we started this concept, 
We wanted to incentivize people who are contributing to the system, enjoying this, uh, you know, like enjoying, uh, contributing to the governance, making next steps together. So that we wanted to give the incentives to these users. But as soon as users start to focus on earning part only, perhaps, then it become a big noise. People are not caring about the game anymore, game itself anymore. People are becoming a, a super like a farming um, how to say, groups. And then like you are not talking to each other. It just just, just like a like a machine. You are just playing to earn. Then it's kind of not we expected in the beginning, right? This is the kind of cash mark that metaverse and Web3 gaming we are still exploring. But if you focus on certain aspect only, we need like a token price or like a to earn part. Can we make the innovation on gaming part? This is a big question mark. So for me, uh, earning part is great that we're going to get the reward by uh, participating to the consensus or the game itself. But maybe we need to think about what kind of interaction we need to do there. And we need a certain mental accounting or like a certain mental buffers that just imagine like you were playing a lot of different games till now without any financial incentives. Actually, you waste your time. Not waste, you had the good memories. But I mean, if someone would say that your mom said, like, stop playing game, you're wasting your time. But you enjoyed it. And you perhaps learned certain tactics, and then you're talking with your friends, and that's the what game about. But then, as soon as you play and it become a real money for your real living, and then you kind of start to focus on earn part. And if it's not giving uh, enough benefit anymore, you will just quit the game. So I wanted to ask Kashin in a set homework to every one of us. If you're a player, and also if you're a game builder, what kind of things you need to think about? If you're a game builder, you need to provide certain incentives. You want to provide incentives, while without making them only focus on that. So if there's another game which gives more token, they just all move there. It's not what you want. You want to make fun, nice, innovative game. If you're a player, you want to play, and then by playing what you're enjoying, if you can earn, it's interesting. But if you just like focus on it, perhaps actually you may earn much more if you don't play and just work, right? So this is a good question mark. This Web3 gaming, play to earn, is the thing we need to focus, or we need to think about how can we use this infrastructure, what kind of things we can make it faster, what kind of game makes sense to be on-chain, or like what kind of things should be on-chain from the game. Uh, one of very, very interesting use case for me is if you can bring the in-game asset to different uh, games. Of course, as we talked about, traditional gaming companies, maybe they don't have a big motivation to do unless market consensus or the user said, oh, you are boring, we don't want to play your game anymore, they will move. They are being prepared, they have a brilliant developers there also, uh, how to say, uh, researching about it. But imagine that you have a certain, I don't know, nice car, in, I don't know, like one game. And then if you go to the other game and you can use that car in the game as well. Of course, we need to think about gaming balance. So in the beginning, maybe it can start like a certain aesthetic effect. So it's just you have it in your skin, but not necessarily it brings something to the game itself. But at a certain point, these game studios can have a chat. They can tune the parameters. And then maybe it can be shared within the game as well. Or you have a lot of different game assets. You are like a hero named user. You want to have your gallery, and in your gallery in Metaverse, you want to have all your item because you're rankers of all different game. It's possible. So there's a lot of things we can do, and I think what I mentioned is still like you know uh, a round of our level of imagination. There's a lot of things we can do, even go beyond. That's what we are curious about. So I would say uh, what we need to do now is. We are exploring the concept. You can go wild. And for that, Avalanche is like a great uh, chain to build because of the low gas fee. And then you have a developer community. You can kind of set up the custom VM. This is giving you a certain advantage. Or, but it doesn't mean that like you need to only lock yourself, just explore around. And this is going to give you a lot of inspiration. You're going to talk to different developer community. So. The last message I want to say is like it's time to build. Uh, we all know the market is a little bit sad these days, but this is the right time to actually build and push forward because you can build the things without noise, build in peace, and also still 
uh, a little bit different from several years before. A lot of people are still believe in this technology now, and they are pouring the money in, try to support you. Avalanche has a great fund, like a developer fund or a Blizzard funds. So you need to build and you need to just move forward and exploring the concept, not focus on the token price or like just the earning concept, but just try to imagine what kind of interaction from this word you can bring it in which people can enjoy or take the advantage of it, while you also have the advantage. Uh, one thing I wanted to add is uh, maybe many of you are based in uh, Germany or maybe around here. Uh, in the end of the month, there are going to be actually NFT Berlin. So if you're thinking about building a certain game using NFT, this could be interesting because there are going to be hackathon following as well. So you can search easily or you can find it from our Twitter as well. If you have any question, you can contact me over Twitter. I opened a DM during this conference. And if you're interested in uh, boot camps or hackathon or accelerator because you want to build and you want to build a game, there's a lot of metaverse themes events coming this year. So yes. So uh, let's build together and feel free to ask me any question today or like a tomorrow, you can contact me. Thank you.